Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever episode of Hard Hats and High Tech. In this podcast series from RIB Software, we'll be uncovering insights, innovations, and strategies to tackle some of the challenges of modern day construction. Each episode, an RIB Software expert will join me to discuss topics like collaboration, artificial intelligence, BIM, and a lot of other interesting topics that will help you succeed in your journey in the building industry. I'm your host, Veranita Calzon, speaking to you from my office in Santiago, in Chile, and I'm really excited to introduce you to our first ever guest, the CEO of RIB Software, Rene Wolf, who is going to be joining me to discuss leadership, innovation, and technology in the building industry. Hi, Rene, how are you? Good, I'm very good. Thank you, Bernadita. Happy to be here and uh, joining the session today. Thank you. I'm really excited to hear all of your experience and knowledge about the construction industry. So should we get started? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, Rene, from your perspective, what are the biggest challenges, challenges facing the construction industry today? Uh, there are quite a lot, actually, um, but I would say the most heavy hitting and important one are dealing with inefficiencies in project delivery, uh, the rising material costs, the labor shortages, and more recently, the pressure to adopt sustainability and sustainable practices uh, more and more in, in the things uh, our customers do uh, every day in the construction industry. And uh, I think one additional topic when I compare this with other industries is, is the absolute need to be very effective in collaborating with each other because there are usually many, many, many stakeholders. And in larger projects, of course, there can be dozens and hundreds and uh, it becomes really clumsy if you don't have your collaboration uh, handled well. And obviously, being part of a software company, we believe software makes a difference there. Okay, yeah, these are not small challenges. And I'm sure new ones will emerge as our industry evolves. So in that sense, what future trends do you foresee in the construction industry? And how is RIB preparing to meet these challenges? Uh, first and foremost, I would, I would say uh, more automation. And with automation, I mean um, things, whether that's labor elements or planning elements that are happening more in the back office to happen um, um, better supported by toolings. Or when we uh, think a little bit forward about the usage of artificial intelligence, digital twins, that certain elements can actually be done um, from uh, uh, by itself without needing human intervention and, and just make uh, all the processes in, in a project um, um, easier, less clumsy, less error prone, faster. And if you can automate, you should automate. And, and this is what other industries I think have been doing to a certain extent, and this is where construction can learn a lot um, from industries like uh, manufacturing heavy, uh, like automotive, uh, food and beverage, et cetera. So there are good practices out there that we can learn from. Okay, and what about RIB? What is RIB doing? Well, we're doing our part um, as a software company. We're developing solutions that, that uh, hopefully really hit the mark of business challenges that our customers are facing. And there can be many fold. Um, when I think about the collaboration aspect I mentioned earlier, it's really about digitizing the whole experience, right? Why would you, uh, until recently, send a fax? Why would you take notes on a piece of paper that you then somehow need to communicate? So using this in a digital fashion uh, does make life more effective. And I think more and more people are used to doing it digitally. I mean, look at everybody who's growing up today. The use of a cell phone and digital means is, is, is natural, unlike... Unlike for me, I had to learn all of that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think this will also be a key element to attract talent because people will expect that things are more digital, that more software is being used to have an attractive environment to work in. Okay, that is very interesting. I mean, in the end, communication and collaboration are the answer, like you say, to many of the challenges facing the construction industry. And the same goes with technology. So could you expand a little bit on why it's so crucial for construction companies to stay updated with industry innovations? So innovation in, in, in principle is important. Uh, I think especially in construction, some of the studies show really staggering numbers, um, how less we have industrialized uh, or innovated in, the, in uh, let's say, the past couple of de decades. 
we're still doing brick and mortar buildings, right? And this has been for hundreds and hundreds of years the case. So, um, and of course, now using more digital tools to innovate uh, the usage of AI, understand really how we can apply AI in the industry. It's easier said than done. So for specific use cases, it could make a big difference going forward, but you need to prepare your own processes, um, uh, your tooling and your people um, for that. So innovation is not only about technological innovation, it's also about innov innovating how you do certain things. Um, and of course, uh, there's always a people element when you talk about changing things and processes and how things have been done traditionally to uh, where, uh, how do we want to do these things going forward? That is a super important element. So that's why I think innovation in its broadest sense, technology, people, processes, super relevant. Um, and of course, not only in construction, but this is where our industry being one of the most under digitized ones uh, can profit a lot um, from current technologies and, and learnings from other areas. Okay, I want to stop on something you said there about our industry being one of the most under digitized ones. I mean, this is no secret. Um, so thinking about that, why do you think it's so challenging to drive digital transformation in construction? Well, I think, I mean, I, I don't have a, a, the answer for that. So a couple of thoughts uh, here. Uh, first of all, there is there are too many projects out there that you can actually handle. So I think um, a lot of time, many companies are facing the challenge. I'm so busy cutting wood, I cannot sharpen my ex, right? And then things don't uh, get better and actually deteriorate over time. Uh, it also takes um, active investment. So being in, a, in an industry that is, let's say, relatively uh, challenged with uh, creating margins, so having the available funds um, to um, think about new ways, investing in, in researches on technology, especially around IT and software and that stuff, it gets in the way quickly if your PL uh, is challenged from a margin perspective. So this is where I see differences with companies that saying, hey, we need to prepare for the next 10 years. So we actually take maybe a crisis or a slowdown in the industry as an opportunity to have time to spend on that and innovate and come out stronger and faster. Um, and others that are so uh, so tied up in their day-to-day -day business that they don't find the time of doing that. And I think this will be a major shift uh, in the next 10 years. So there will be there will be companies that are being left left in the in in the uh, the old way of doing things versus versus other companies that have embraced new ways and then are more effective and they will be more not only profitable but more successful in general. And uh, that's actually something I've seen in other in other industries as well, where in uh, in downturn times it's time to innovate to come out stronger than uh, than you went into into it. And I think this is an element that uh, that uh, absolutely would also uh, be relevant for the construction industry. Okay, that's really interesting. I mean, in the end, technology is no longer a choice but a mandatory thing in construction if you want to stay competitive. So. That's interesting. Okay, we've talked a lot about challenges in the construction industry so far, but Renee, I know your background is not in construction. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about your background and how does strategic planning differ in construction compared to other industries? Um, yeah, well, and then I've been spending a lot of time in my professional life in the industrial automation environment. So dealing with very automated manufacturing environments typically, and I mentioned automotive earlier as, as one of the, the, let's say, most developed uh, manufacturing pieces. There's pharmaceutical, there's process industries and so forth. So, so this is where I learned that um, you can super optimize certain repetitive processes. Uh, if you put your mind to it and it's not just software it's a mix of, of the hardware environment and having the right uh, let's call it hardware uh, tools and infrastructure uh, plus the software component and then i've seen companies to be um, super effective in in uh, doing really really step changes forward by by really putting a mind to it and challenging themselves how can we do things radically different uh, be because we need that outcome. We want to be not 3% more productive. We want to be 30% more productive. And that requires a totally different way of thinking it. you got to deconstruct everything you do, how you do it, um, and then uh, apply 
of course, uh, pragmatically uh, and also intellectually uh, challenging now ideas to find a new solution to it. And uh, sounds easier than it is. That's not an easy process to follow. And, and again, it takes time and investment and belief. Once there is a solution out there, it might look a little crazy, but uh, there are examples out there where they actually then significantly moved the needle and became then leaders in their respective industries. Um, so first and foremost, I think it's about learning or I've seen a couple of these things that I now try also uh, to bring into our considerations. I mean, within RIP, how we develop software, um, where do we develop software and what are some of the processes that made uh, my previous life made us very effective in how we deploy software and find these solutions, how to interact with customers. So it goes from sales to R&D, et cetera. So this is really where I can see we can learn a, we can learn a lot uh, from how things are done elsewhere. Uh, but it's not it's not just a copy paste, right? You gotta you have to understand what makes it so effective and how would that translate into, in this case, our environment or a customer's environment. But it can be done. And I think that attitude of um, um, almost stealing with pride from somewhere else, mm -hmm. or we only copy from the best, is, is really healthy because um, there are smart people everywhere. And uh, there are numerous examples um, out there where, um, where um, very, very good solutions out of a certain area were actually applicable elsewhere. No one would have thought that. And uh, business model changes. Um, also, one of these elements, I mean, think about Airbnb, they don't own any infrastructure yet. Uh, mm -hmm. They cater to a lot of uh, folks out there, making sure they have hotel rooms or places to stay. Um, and that was a radical new approach uh, to find a solution for a traveler to find accommodation. And, uh, and maybe there are some of these elements or thoughts that will allow us uh, and, and our customers to do radically new things. Okay, that's interesting. So in the end, it's like thinking outside of the box and putting yourself in the shoes of the customers to offer the best solutions. So back to our video podcast. What do you hope our listeners will take away from this podcast series? Well, I hope there, there are, let's say, down-to-earth, pragmatic, real-life examples and exchanges. So it's not about dreaming something up that looks great on a PowerPoint slide. Uh, or is only a vision, I think there needs to be a solid uh, path and idea how can we execute against that. Obviously, many things are more of a journey than uh, than just one, one set of activities and you're done after a couple of weeks. So hopefully, I think we stir the right mindset and create the right um, the right connections with the folks attending, attending um, the podcast um, to say, uh, hey, I'm interested in learning more and maybe to talk even more with RIP and the experts about how certain things have been addressed. We have literally thousands of customers, and hence we learned a lot from how our customers do certain things. Uh, we want to constantly improve uh, the way our products help them. And so this is always worth having a good discussion and obviously and obviously making, making the connection from some of the more uh, strategic thoughts into the reality and how things can actually be implement and execute it because at the end you got to do you got to do what you uh, what you intend to do and, and uh, everybody needs to earn their uh, earn their money the hard way so that means execution is also key in balance with the right strategy okay i agree with you and i hope we can achieve this goal with this podcast series which i'm really excited to do um now renee i know you don't have much time so to finish what is the one key message or piece of advice you'd like to leave our listeners as they navigate the future of the construction industry? I want to say, uh, I would say, um, don't be afraid of change. Um, every new application, whether that's a technolo technological change, whether that's a process change, or even a cultural change uh, in, in a company or in the things you do requires a lot of courage. So don't be afraid, um, in, in, embrace it, Think carefully about it, make the investment, spend the time, spend the money on innovating how you do certain things um, and things will get better. And uh, I think every every one of us loves uh, to transform and be part of a, a positive change. So don't be afraid. Uh, also, just 
don't be overexcited, right? So I think uh, the checks and balances um, um, to make sure you end up where you uh, where you want to end up is important. But I can only encourage that. And uh, lots of studies, lots of companies, lots of examples out there where people weren't afraid, although there were doubts beginning and, and came out, uh, let's say, super successful on the other side. And I think we can all do that. Hey, that's really great advice. Renee, thank you very, very much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure for me to talk to you. You're a really experienced professional, so I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. And to our audience, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll be back with another episode very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.